Hey guys, I hope everything is going well for you. Welcome to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Before we begin, I want to thank you so much for the interest you showed in the previous high contrast tutorial. I received so many amazing comments. I am trying to respond to each one individually. And in these comments, there were also requests for tutorials on different topics. I will try to cover all of them as much as I can. So today's topic is one of the most asked techniques. I will show you how to create a split tone, which is quite important for achieving a specific look. But before that, let's talk a bit about what exactly should come to mind when we say split toning. Split toning is a post-processing technique used to add different colors to the shadows and highlights of an image. This can enhance the mood, add a creative effect or emulate certain film looks. Split toning is also used in cinema primarily as color grading technique to influence mood, tone and emotional resonance of a scene. For example, warm highlights and cool shadows often used to show optimism mixed with underlying tension or sadness. Specific split toning combinations can evoke different eras or genres. Sepia tones often used in period pieces or flashback sequences to evoke a sense of, you know, nostalgia or history. Also, we have the bleach bypass, a technique that retains the black and white silver in film, creating a high contrast, desaturated look with subtle split toning. Split toning is also helps to build the world of a film by giving locations and settings a distinct look and feel. For example, a post-apocalyptic baselands may feature desaturated colors with cool blue shadows and sickly green highlights and these contribute to a sense of desolation and decay. So in conclusion, knowing what the split tone technique is for and in which situations to use it is just as important as knowing how to do it. If it used correctly, it will significantly elevate the impact of your film. Now let's take a look at how we can simply create it in DaVinci Resolve. I have different types of footage shot under varying lighting conditions in my timeline. I didn't use log footage to avoid confusion with CSTs. Instead, we will directly compare the split tone effect. First, I want to demonstrate the effect on grayscale. Click on the effects gallery, go to the generators menu, drag and drop grayscale onto the timeline. Then right click and convert it into a new compound clip. Now we can move to the color page. We can see all our clips here. Before moving on to them, let's see the effect on the grayscale first. The left side of the grayscale transitions from completely black to completely white on the right side. To apply split tone, we will give different tones to the shadows and highlights. But while doing this, we need to preserve the mid-tones because usually skin tones are located in this middle area. So we need to pay attention to this. Now let's select a point in this mid gray area using the qualifier. When you click, you will see a point appear in the middle of the curves. Normally, I'm going to use the curves for this effect, but I also want to show you what happens if you try to do it with the primaries. I will pull the gain a bit towards the warmer side. Pay attention to the waveform on the scopes. Now I'm pulling the lift towards the blue region. Let's take a closer look at the waveform. I will expand this. As you can see, by splitting the RGB channels, it also affects the whitest and blackest areas of the image. If you are not doing this deliberately, you won't get the right result. To make a look appear natural and believable, we need to preserve the blacks and the whites. Now let's reset this and continue with the curves. Place our point in the mid gray area. Then click the chain icon here to separate the RGB channels. Select the red channel, also enlarge this menu for better visibility. Let's start with the highlights. I'm pulling the top point to the left. Now let's move to the green channel. Similarly, I will pull it slightly to the left. We have started to catch some warm tones in the highlights. Moving on to the blue channel. Differently, for the blue channel and also to preserve the whites, I'm pulling the point down from the middle. Now let's quickly move on to the shadow areas. I'm selecting the blue channel again. By increasing it, I'm enhancing the blue tone in the shadows. Select the green channel and increase that as well. As we bring the green closer to the blue, we achieve a slight teal color. Move on to the red channel and reduce the red tones. I won't exaggerate this too much. I think that's enough. 
As you can see, we have applied cool tones to the shadows and warm tones to the highlights. The mid tones are still almost neutral for now. Now let's apply what we've done to the other clips in order. I'm just going to quickly select a hero frame. I will create another node. In the first node, let's just make simple adjustments using the primary wheels. This will help us see the effect a little bit better. We can take the still that we took and apply it to the second node. Let's also view the effect on a larger screen. Although the changes are minimal, the effect is quite noticeable. Of course, depending on the intensity of the effect, you can make further adjustments in the curves. Or you can reduce the key output from the key menu by half. This way, by controlling the intensity of the effect, your results will be much better. I'm doing a before and after comparison. The change is very subtle, but I think it changes the mood significantly. Let's also look at other clips. This time I'm going to apply the changes I made to the previous clip to this clip. Let's max out the effect. We can look at it on the full screen. As you can see, it's much more noticeable in this clip. With just the split tone technique, we drastically change the mood of this clip. If the effect is too strong, we can always reduce its intensity by half again. I'm doing a before and after comparison. The effect has also had a significant impact on the skin tone in this clip. Let's move on to the next one. I'm applying the same changes I made to the first clip to this one. I'm also going to reset the key output to one. Now we see in this clip that both the highlights and shadows are greatly affected by the split toning. In fact, it loses some of its believability. Since it doesn't appear natural to our eyes, it creates a sense of something being wrong. But we can adjust this by making some modifications in the curves tool. I mentioned earlier that we need to preserve the mid-tones, so now we are going to increase that range we need to preserve. I'm on the red channel, I'm holding down the alt and I'm creating a new point. When you pull it down, it will snap to the main line. I'm pulling this point upwards. Similarly, I'm holding down Alt and creating another point in the shadows. Pulling it towards the mid-tones. Move to the green channel. I'm placing a point in the highlights. I want to enlarge this to see it better. I'm placing another point in the shadows. Lastly, let's do the same for the blue channel. I'm holding down Alt while placing the points. Now, as you can see, we have a wider area in the mid-tones, so the effect will impact the brightest and the darkest areas the most. Let's view it on the big screen. This is before and this is after. As you can see, we have reduced the effect on the mid-tones a bit. Let's also try reducing the intensity by half. Now, I think it looks much more accurate and believable. I would also like to compare this by creating a new version. I'm applying the first version and creating a new one. This is the first version. And this is the second version. There is a very subtle difference between them, but it's still noticeable. I would also like to try this second version where we preserve the mid-tones in this clip. Yeah, I think we've achieved a pretty good result here. After applying the split tone effect to this clip, I would probably create a parallel node and work on the model's skin tone. But of course, that's a topic for another tutorial. Alright guys, this concludes our tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. I try to respond to each comment individually. If there are other videos you would like to see, please let me know. Thank you very much for your support and thank you for watching this video. I would be very happy if you subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.